Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. The scene off Sandy Hook on New Year's Eve day, that was Friday. Joe Bruno said he and his crew got into about three hours of topwater striped bass action just off the hook. He said it had over 30 fish all to themselves, whacking poppers, missing, coming back again, whacking it again, following it all up to the boat. It was just amazing, awesome striped bass fishing on New Year's Eve day in the fog. Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. And if you started to partake in your New Year's Eve festivities a little early and then slept it off on Saturday, you probably missed it. From Sandy Hook to Island Beach, striped bass from 20 inches to 20 pounds or more. And they were piling on herring and bunker. It looked like peanuts and adult bunker. They were popping up here and then gone and popping up over here. Yes, by boat and by beach. In fact, Chris Ferry said Monmouth County beaches were on fire. That was Friday morning, New Year's Eve day. I heard from Belford's Jim or Joe Scabetta. He had over a dozen bass in northern Monmouth County, someplace. He said it was New Year's Eve weekend, so I don't know if it was Friday, Saturday, maybe even Sunday. But they were all on tsunami swim shads. What Joe told me is, quote, was a great bite. Fish were very aggressive. Plenty of them still around. And I hope that's what we're looking at right now. Plenty of fish still around. Personally, I overcoached myself on Friday morning. I got up, went to point, figured I'm going to spend a couple of hours. It was low water, so I'm thinking, eh, maybe a striper or two will pop out of the Manasquan. I'll get them right here. Then the texts began coming. I hightailed it down the beach, down 35, all the way to Island Beach State Park. And just as I was getting at Gillies, I got a text from my friend, Captain Jeff Evans from Creekside Outfitters. He was out with a buddy of his. He said, the bathing beach, it's on fire right now. Well, by the time I got there, then I'm hearing other reports. Go to area 17, go to 23, go back to Gillies. Everybody was just chasing fish around. The birds would be there, the bass and bunker, and the herring as well, and it would be bedlam. A lot of pencils were thrown, a lot of those traditional Polaris poppers, also the swim shads, but sometimes you really needed some casting distance uh, to get into these fish. The predominant bite, for the most part, seemed to be in that, that secret zone, the forbidden zone, if you will, the governor's mansion where buggies can't go. So you're either walking south from the, the tail, from, from the tail head end, or you're coming in from Gillies, but a lot of good fish right there in tight to the beach. And um, I'm pretty sure that this action continued into Sunday as well. I bumped into quite a few friends at Island Beach on Friday. Joe Albanese, for example, I uh, saw him, he got into the mix uh, over the New Year's Eve weekend and just a few days before his birthday as well. Happy birthday, Joe. You might share a birthday with Coach Manuel. Happy birthday, Chuck. Tommy Cox got into the melee. I was getting texts from everybody. I didn't even recognize some of the numbers saying, we're on them, we're on them here too. Uh, George Brown, I saw him while we were airing up to get off the park. He showed his fish, 29 incher. He brought it into Grumpy's for weigh-in. And then George texted me later and said, look at this. And it wasn't just bunker in those bellies but a 10 inch herring in there as well. Um, so yeah, I, the, the, the pencils were working, but it's also lent some ability for those, those white lures, those white SP minnows, the white hydro minnows, the white plastic plugs, you know, your traditionals. Uh, I was fishing next to a guy over the weekend. He was using the Smoky Joe Redfin. So those fish are in tight, those herring and bunker schools. If you get the right conditions, you get a nice day. You'll go up and you may see them. And that's especially in Ocean and Monmouth County. That was through Sunday. Then Monday comes. Ocean and Monmouth County stretch into the weekend is hot. Monday, snowpocalypse, boom, we get hit, right? Coach Madden. Uh, for the most part, there wasn't a lot of snow in the ground in Northern Ocean County into Monmouth County. Most of this occurred in Atlantic and Cape May County, but especially along the shore, they got walloped. I even saw that some of the New York news crews sent their folks down to look for the snow, snow apocalypse. Hey, do me a favor, Lonnie. I love your weather forecasts out of New York City, but if I have to spell Verrazano correctly, the least you can do is proof Barnegat for crying out loud. South of Barnegat, a few fish out front along the LBI stretch by boat and by beach 
We get down into Brigantine. Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle said over the weekend, he said, Andy, Andrew here reported a fish on a metal on Friday. But as far as the boat reports, where Rick, where Absecan Inlet was the locus, right, of, of so much outstanding striper activity in November and December. Well, it seems like that body of fish by the weekend moved down off of Ventnor and into Cape May County which we found out from talking to the folks at Lewis Harbor Marina. They said the crew aboard No Limit Sport Fishing got out on Sunday, January 2nd with Captain John Azado. They were off Cape May on Sunday, kept their limit of slot fish, but they also released stripers to get this 49 and a half inches. So some of those big fish are still around. The folks from Lewis Harbor said that striper bite has stretched down to Indian River as well. That was through the weekend. Of course, then we get a cold snap. I guess it's not really right to call it a cold snap, it is January, but the way it's been so mild, it feels like a cold snap. So whether those stripers are out along the beaches of Ocean and Monmouth County at this stretch, middle of the week, I will tell you a buddy of mine was going up to Sandy Hook because he heard of something that was going on. So I do think those fish are still around. Um, but as far as guys fishing in Atlantic and Cape May, I think the snow really impacted a lot of folks. If you're out and about fishing and you're catching some fish, you don't have to give these specific locations, but text me email me or share the information right here on our YouTube page page help put some people onto fish let us know that Atlantic and Cape May County are still alive and still in on the striped bass fishing because I'll tell you it's it's harder to find shops that are open things just seem to shut down a little bit faster as you get down into southern New Jersey but it has been a wonderful end of 2021 and it looks like it's a pretty good start to 2022 as well Cold snaps, I mentioned cold snaps. I don't know if you saw this on social media. If you follow us on our Facebook page, you may have seen this, a bunch of dead stripers up along the banks in Nova Scotia. Well, according to Trevor Avery, he's a striped bass research team member at Acadia University there in Nova Scotia. He said there are about a million striped bass um, in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, but there's another group that lives mostly off the Atlantic coast off of Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. And that's in addition to our population of stripers from New England down to, I'm gonna say Chesapeake Bay. Uh, used to be, I'd say, North Carolina, but doesn't seem like those fish are spending much time in North Carolina anymore. But back to Avery, he told the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation that the Department of Fisheries is looking into this kill. Everybody's got a theory on what it was. I personally think it was the rapid, sharp, cold that we've had, that cold snap that we had. In fact, what Avery said is there's a lot that's not known about the Canadian stock of striped bass, especially those overwintering fish. But what he did remind people is in salt water, uh, salt water, because of the salt content, it actually will go below 32 degrees before it actually freezes. That's why a lot of striped bass will move into the freshwater area, where in freshwater at 32 degrees, water freezes. So it's not the same difference. You know, a lot more times you get that fish kill in a saltier estuary than you will out in the freshwater. That's according to this. Uh, as soon as we find out more information on this fish kill, I think a lot of people are interested in this, uh, but especially given that there's almost like 10 different stocks of striped bass, but there's definitely a difference between the Canadian striped bass and what we've got on the coastal United States, which brings me back to another reminder. And that is about the striped bass closure in January and February. As we see some of these striped bass in the back bay, guys, we're still catching them pretty well uh, in December. January and February, you're not allowed to target striped bass in the back. But I think that as these stripers move into some of these estuaries, think the deeper parts of the Toms River, the Mullica, the Great Egg Harbor River, uh, also the Delaware and Raritan, I think we have a healthy population of striped bass that don't join that coastal migration, but are gonna hunker down for the winter months. By the time that striper fishery opens up in New Jersey on March 1st, Katie bar the door. I think we're gonna have another good spring 2022 with striped bass in the back. Again, striped bass is closed in the back bay. And I got a couple of texts and emails from folks who asked pretty darn good question. If it's open out in the Atlantic Ocean, but I'm not allowed to be in possession of a striped bass in the back bay, what happens if somebody boards my boat as I'm on the way in from legally harvesting a striped bass in the back? So well, that's a good question. Typically, it's up to enforcement to you know, decide whether you are actively fishing in the back. But I know, that's a pretty big loophole. Uh, 
I'm going to ask that question on Thursday. That's when the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meets. I would remind you at this point, uh, subscription to the Fisherman Magazine is $29.95 for the year. You get 38 issues of the magazine. I have 38 editorials. One of the editor's logs that I wrote in September of 2021 was called New Jersey Fluke Options. That's them right there to the screen. Uh, this was one of the sets of summer flounder options for New Jersey to come up with a slot fish that has been discussed in the back channels. I'm hoping, not sure when or if they're ever gonna make the light of day, but if it happens to be discussed at this Thursday's January 6th New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting, I will bring that news and information to you next week here. I will bring it to you at thefisherman.com. Yes, I will put it in the Fisherman Magazine. But the one suggestion I have is, you, if you remember last year, the state of New Jersey sent an email survey out to people. I don't know if they used email addresses or just put this thing together. But what I suggested uh, when I talked to some folks last year is why don't you use the Angler Registry database? If you wanna get what 250,000 anglers want, send it to 250,000 email addresses. Then you get one comment per email address. It's very simple. I may bring up that question again at some point as well. That's your reminder to make sure you're in the database for 2022. I've already gotten my registration because I was already out on January 1st. And if you're gonna fish the salt, make sure you go to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. Saltwaterregistry.nj.gov, fill it out, it's free. That's the way you can legally fish in salt waters, but that's the way they're going to do surveys in the future, uh, whether it's a survey of your interest, but also for angler harvest surveys, saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. Of course, at this point, uh, boy, if they had asked me what I thought about this, they would have gotten a nice email. Black sea bass is closed. Yeah, I know, we're gonna get another cutback in 2022, but for now, we don't have to worry about it because strike, we're not even allowed to catch black sea bass in January and February. So hopefully you were like uh, young Ryan Lawrence here. Ryan got on board the Golden Eagle to finish out the 2021 season grand style, doubleheader. The folks that I talked to that finished off the season with black sea bass brought in some jumbos. Uh, I think I reported that Jamaica had a six pounder or something like that. So if you loaded up on the sea bass before the season, good for you. Filling in the gaps, of course, as we start 2022, we've got blackfish. Tog fishery is still there for the, the hardy souls getting out on some of these for hire boats. Uh, I know Steve Spinelli aboard the Skylarker let me know, yeah, he was continuing to blackfish. Oh, and of course, you've got some of those mixed bag fisheries as well, uh, like cod. This one's a 12 pounder. Uh, this was for Anthony Hacker. Uh, Anthony is the son of Captain Chad from Tagged Fish. He was out on the Skylarker last week and in addition to blackfish up to eight or nine pounds, had this cod as well. So yeah, there are some plenty, uh, plenty good options. Uh, to start 2022. Um, of course, you're gonna have to be willing to brave the elements. Um, note, of course, that I'm not doing my video forecast from outside, so that tells you about my element of bravery. But yeah, there are options. Uh, and of course, like that January cover displays, you've got some good winter trout fishing here in the Garden State, but also finding out about some of those fish out west with my friend, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. A very happy new year to everyone, and I hope we have a great fishing year ahead of us. And just a note, be sure you get out and get that new fishing license, whether you're in Pennsylvania or Jersey, get out and get that license before you head out on that water. So just a little tip there. You know, talking about getting out in the water, uh, we are finally starting to see some temperatures get down where we could start building some ice relatively quickly over the next week, maybe week and a half or so. It was about 13 degrees in my car this morning when I took off. So uh, we get a couple more nights like that we're going to start to see some ice build up and finally get out in some of that hard water that I know a lot of us have been looking forward to but in the meantime there's still some of that open water fishing left big water like this is going to take a while to cool down guys so you know so it's going to take some time to build that ice but enjoy some fish while we can we still got that strong strong brown trout bite all those guys are still out hitting those creeks and even some of these lakes where those brown trout are stocked a good opportunity to get out and get some of them 
Now also that the large mouth are still biting really good too. Uh, checked in with my good friend Nick Canestra. He's still hitting them with those uh, blade baits and even those slower baits. You might want to tie on maybe a Ned rig. Work them real slow uh, around some deeper water because those fish can be moving down where that warm water is maybe about 20 feet down plus. So remember that lake turns over. It's warmer down the bottom than it is on the surface. So Ned rigs, things like that you can work slow is going to be your best bet. But I did check in also with Tim Keebler, you know, guide on the Delaware River. He said the walleye bite. You know, we were talking last week about the walleye bite. This week, it's still on fire. Tim Keeper's out getting giant walleye on the Delaware. So guys, if you have a chance to get out and want to get a wet line on some fast moving water, get out to the Delaware, work with guys like Tim. They'll get you on some of those great walleye. Lots of fishing, guys. I hope you have a great year. Lots of new PBs, and we'll see you out here. Again, from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. It's showtime again. Boy, do we miss this, huh? Hey, this Saturday, January 8th, the Staten Island Tuna Club, they'll be hosting their Inshore Offshore Expo and Fisherman's Flea Market. That's from 8 till 2. They've got seminars from Captain Brian Rice, from Captain Jimmy Frieda, and my friend Anthony Tony Maja Arcabasio. That's the Staten Island Tuna Club Inshore Offshore Expo and Fisherman's Flea Market. It's going to be held at the Mount Loretto CYO building. That's there at 6581 Highland Boulevard in Staten Island. If you're in South Jersey, Central, South Jersey, Pennsylvania, you also have the two-day Wildwood Fishing and Boating Expo that takes place this Saturday and Sunday, January 8th and 9th at the Wildwoods Convention Center. Just drive into Wildwood, go to the beach, you'll find the Convention Center. Um, Captain Dave Marciano from Wicked Tuna is expected to be there. Uh, you can get all the details in the January edition of the, uh, of the Fisherman Magazine. Of course, you can also visit fishingexpowildwood.com. Now, sadly, I will not be able to attend this weekend's event. We've got some scheduling conflicts, but I am so looking forward to getting back out on the show circuit later in January, especially February. We've got a whole lot of events coming up in February. Um, people ask me all the time, hey, do you know if this show is going on? check the January edition. As many shows as I knew that we had going on, they're in the January edition. And when the February edition comes out, I'll have even more to share with you for February into March. But it's, uh, it's always a great opportunity for me to meet up with some folks who love the fish, who stopped by the booth a couple of years ago. I met uh, the Kept It Fishing family, the Ildefonso family, and young Pedro, who came up to me, uh, he came up to George and I at one of the shows. I was like, this kid is awesome. Uh, and this is why I love the outdoor shows so much. Pedro just turned 13. He is a hardcore fisherman. Every week I get videos and, and, and photos from Pedro's dad about their fishing exploits over the weekend. Um, I don't know how you planned your New Year's Eve festivities, but a father and son fishing trip taking advantage of the last of the back bay striper fishing, this is awesome. This video I had to share with you. And my message to you TV personalities like George Pomveromo or Nick Konachewski, keep an eye out over your shoulder because young Pedro is gunning for one of those uh, fishing shows in the future. Yeah, the new generation is right on your tail. So catch them up, my friends. Stay young, stay hungry. Uh, and as a good bit of advice, when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. Go get them, Pedro. Oh my God, net, 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 net. Net right now. Look how big this wing. Wait till you'll see this thing. <sighs> Wait, 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 wait. Bring it, bring it, wait. No, don't do that. No, 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 no. Oh my God. Guys, I just caught the biggest. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at that little thing. Oh, it got dangling from its front. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's the way you end yeah. the year. Oh. Medium rod, slim wave. I'm shaking right now. Accurate. 
I'm going to take the whole fish out of the net so you guys can see what I caught this beast of a striper on. Guys, on a little, on that little Jigging World 20 gram jig. Look how small that hook is. Look at that. Whoa. Guys, this is the way you end the year. Striper fishing. Oh my gosh. This might be my new personal best striped awesome. bass. Look at that little Thank you. <laughs> and look at that little jig. On that little thing right there. <sighs> Woo! Oh. I'm gonna put this fish down. I'm gonna take some pictures and put them in the cooler. But this might be, I think this is my personal bass. Striped bass and a little 20 gram jig <sighs> on a medium six foot, eight to 15 pound, quarter ounce to an ounce and a half jig on the Quantum Acuris, 30 pound with a shock leader of 30 pounds. A little 20 gram Jigging World Micro Flip Jig with the blood worm. Tipped with a blood worm about that size. <laughs> Caught this beautiful fish. Gotta take some pictures and put them in the cooler. But this is the way we end a year and kept the fishing. Happy New Year. Wow, this is amazing. Woo! It's Tigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.